All right. Okay. Uh, when we are done with this, before and we, before we jump in the lab, I would like also to talk a little bit about you guys are thinking about transfers in San Jose State and do engineering or computer science. Um, I've got, got some data in the, the San Jose State specifically is impacted in this area. Um, and then I have the, at the same time, I have the physics uh, professor there asking you guys to remember and to consider physics as a backup plan in case your, your goals don't go through because of the required, um, the impact of the situation of some of the state and the GPA that required, required a certain program, like 3.5 to 3.9. And I will show the data, but I don't want to do it now. All right. So first one, since we have an exam next week, you can start working on it. And let's see if this works. OK, how far from your image? How far are you from your image when you stand uh, 0.75 meters in front of a vertical plane mirror. So how do we do that? Mirror. And you are pretty much 0.75 meters away. So in a plane mirror, the image form is, first of all, real or virtual? virtual? Virtual. So then you'd have, so how do we form, how do we form a, an image there? Well, if you take this point here and think of this point as being a source of light, sending light rays in every single direction, so certainly there is one that goes over here, and according to the laws of reflection, reflects over there, and then go all the way to the sky. So if you extend it, it might, to your surprise, find the extended of this ray that bounces in the mirror, go backward, same opposite direction, and kaboom, meets at that point. You can do the same exercise with any other angle. And then rebounds. In fact, doesn't go anywhere else because it hits the floor. But then you take the extension, and then it goes in there. So your image is right here, right? That is the image. So how far is the image from, from you? So then you have to uh, remember um, a little bit of uh, geometry have triangles they are congruent this side is common to this side over here and you have this angle that happened to be so if you do an extension here uh, this angle uh, where is it uh, this angle appears in here and therefore, since this whole deal is 90 degrees, uh, I want to show this light. This side here is congruent. is the same as this one. And then this distance must be the same as this one. And then you have... On 0.5 meters.
Okie dokie. So this angle here appears right here. And then you play around with um, with with the angle. Expand this, it's confusing, but you, you, we did in class. Any question there? All good? About this. An object is 12 centimeters in front of, oh, this is a, that, now it's a mirror, it's a concave mirror. So for concave mirror, if you have a computer, you have a computer in front of you, you can go to uh, OpenStax, and then you can follow. Uh, how they can I do that? Go to OpenStax. And find the part. Should I do that or you guys can do it? You guys can do it, right? You know your book better than I do. So go to volume three and then find find the uh, the rules that you need to use when you are forming this type of images. So we have a concave mirror. By the way, when you have a mirror, the equation, the only equation there is relating uh, distance object, distance image, and focal, uh, focal length of these uh, mirrors is 1 over, oops, 1 over f, 1 over focal length, is 1 over <clears throat> distance of object to the mirror, plus 1 divided by distance image to the mirror. So for a concave mirror, so we have to know how to make a concave mirror like this. A concave mirror, uh, the radius is positive, and the focal length, therefore, is positive, too, because two times the focal length, according to small angle approximation, is equal to the radius. So the distance image will be positive if the image is in the same side of the object and the object is in front of the mirror. So the curve is to the object, basically. Okay. So the only situation in which, for this type of mirror, the image will be virtual, I mean, the images are all real, is when and when you place the object in between the focal point and the mirror itself, that's the only situation. And then we have a magnifying uh, situation like we did in class. I don't have the mirror here or the mirror is way there in the, in the corner. You can, you can play around later. So, but um, let's see what's being given. We have an object that is 12 centimeters in front of a concave mirror and the image is also given in front of the mirror. So let's put the object here. And distance object, DO, is basically this. This is DO. So since it is said the image is also in front of the mirror, so the distance image should be placed with a positive number in your equation. Can you please look in the book so you don't get lost? Because if I give you uh, the ruling, you should be able to apply. If you don't see it before, and you wait to see when the exam is in front of you, you might have to think twice. But if you don't want to do, it's pretty much up to you. So, and we just go ahead and find it. What is the focal length? So 1 over f, as we want to find is equal 1 over distance object, 12, 1 over 12, plus 1 over distance image, 1 over 3. And then we operate that. So 
So f is equal to what? 5 divided by 12, right? No. 12 divided by 5. Don't forget to flip it over, right? And that is equal to what? 2.4. So now, for f just for fun, and because if I place a problem like that in the exam, I want you to do it. So why don't you show me that you can do, uh, or, or you can find a position of the images using uh, light rays diagram. So you, you, you do your little mirror there, and you put a main axis. Sometimes the image might be formed behind a mirror. It's not going to be this case. Um, the focal length is 2.4 meters. So the radius is 4.8 meters. Right? So let's say the radius uh, could be here. So this is the, ra the center. Um, the center of curvature of this this mirror so the focal focal length is right here so this distance here is 2.4 now the distance the object is from the mirror is 12 centimeters so if this is 4.8 4, .8, 4 8, 12. So the object is somewhere here. That's the object. So how do we figure position of the image? I like to trace a parallel line that's going to go past where? A parallel line should go where? Focal point. Focal point. So hits the mirror reflects and go to the focal point to very far away okay so where does the other uh, light ray should go you can choose right you can choose to pass through the center if it goes to the center like this can you see my marker <clears throat> yeah so if you go to the center it goes like this hits the center now is the radial direction it hits the mirror and go back in the same direction. See that? Or you can choose to shoot a ray to the vertex right here. And then rebounds with the same angle. And then crosses somewhere here. Okay? So why don't we choose the center? That's what I will do. And then rebounds, right? So go all the way there. So the image is right here. I barely can do it. You want me to expand? I don't think I can. Oh, I can. Cool. It's right here. Upside down. It's an image that is upside down. And this tip here is in the cross of these two lines. I'm kind of expanding. Is all good? Simple? Okay. How about this? Again, a concave spherical mirror has a radius given. So a concave, not convex, concave mirror has a radius that is positive, and the focal, focal length is also positive, and focal length is half of the radius. In convex mirror, the focal length and radius are negative. Convention. So make sure you remember that. Uh, it creates a real image in front of the mirror. So let's do that. So we have a mirror. 
concave. We have the center somewhere here, focal point, and, and the image is 30 centimeters in front of the mirror. Now look at this. This image is real and is more distant than, than even the, the, the radius. So how can we, we do this type of thing? How do we do that? Well, I don't know, but I know the equation for a mirror equation. And I just plug numbers. Fifteen centimeters. So, if I place my object here, my object is not going to do it. It's going to be form image some way here, always smaller, and and not further from the center. So my object is fifteen centimeters, which is between the focal point and and the, the, the center of this mirror. So my object is right here. So let's see how this image is formed. Let's see how this image is formed. How do we do? Take a parallel line, right? And that goes through focal. And then what? Well, you could take the radial direction too. So if you from this point you shoot a ray that follows the radial direction, see that? And then it comes back the same direction. It's gonna hit right here. And now you have your image formed. It's a magnified image, but upside down. Okay. Can you choose another one? Yes. So if we shoot a light ray that goes to the vertex, that should be reflect with the same angle and should go there. <laughs> too much, too much guarana or cafe, coffee. There is a fourth one. If you shoot to the focal point, it should run what? Parallel. Parallel. Okay, got it, simple. So in the exam, give me two at least, right? You have four, you have an option of four, give it two. If you have the time, do a third one, just make sure you are in the proper track. And I'll give you rulers for that. Okay, sorry, I have a control time. Number four. Uh, we have a spherical side mirror on a car. Oh, that's the convex one. I was driving today and I was remembering and I was looking at this mirror there. It's, it's funny. So you have a convex mirror on the side of your car. The radius is given 25 centimeters. Another car is following 20 meters behind the mirror, <laughs> right? So here's your mirror in the car. That's the convex mirror in the car. So right there, um, what I did here is correct. Writing the radius as 25 uh, centimeters, is that correct? No, something is wrong. What it is? Sign. So the object, which is the other car, is right here. So we have a car right there. Right? And the car is 20 meters 
behind. So we have the, the mirror here, right? And you have a car that's 20 meters over there. Okay. So the focal length of this mirror is negative 12.5 uh, centimeters. And the height of the car is given 1.6 meters. How tall is its image? Well, uh, we want to find the height of the image, right? How tall is the image? So we have these uh, equations that relate magnification. And again, you have these in your sheet sheet. But you have to know what that represents. So magnification is given by the negative of distance image to distance object, but is also equal to the height of uh, the height of the image by the height of the object. Okay, and this negative here arises because of uh, images can be upright or inverted. If the the, the images are upside down, um, it, it goes with a uh, positive number, a negative number. If it's the other way, it gets a negative value. So then we go to our mirror equation. 1 over R is 1 over the I plus 1 over the O. Um, so 1 over negative 12.5 is equal to 1 over distance image plus 1 over uh, the distance of object is 20 meters. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, 20 meters behind. So this is... Uh, we have to make conversions here. Huh? Uh, where is it? So this is negative. Point one to point point five is equal to one over the i plus one over twenty. So one over the i is equal to negative one over one twenty five minus one over twenty. And then from here, what is this? One. And then from here we find the distance of the image, which appears to be bigger or further away. So basically, that's what we're going to find. So we find the car apparently seems to be further than it really is. The car is closer. So that's why the, the beauty of this mirror is allow you to have a wider view of what's going on, shrink the image of everyone, which gives you the impression that is further back. The image is further. In a plane mirror, the distance of image to you is the dis uh, is half of the distance that you have the impression you are to the object, right? To to the image, I mean, uh, which is the same distance of you to the mirror, and and here um, this mirror distorts that feeling. So then you have to find your the eye. So you find this. So when you find this, you plug it here. And since you have the height of the object, you can find the height of the image, basically. Okay. So the two steps type of problem. Question? All good? Scott? Good? Now uh, what is this? Man's face, 30 centimeters in front of a co concave spherical shaving mirror. So that's the concave mirror. And the image is erect. 
and 1.5 times as large as its face. So we have a magnification that is 1.5 times that is equal to uh, the height of the image divided by the height of the object. So the image is bigger than, than I mean, you want, right? You want to look in the mirror. You want to see all the details in your face. So we have a relation here. The height of the image is 1.5, the height of the object, basically. Um, and we want to find the range of curvature of the mirror. So before we start uh, doing a calculation, remember uh, we are dealing with a concave mirror. The radius must be positive. Now the other issue is since the image is being formed erect, this image is virtual because for concave mirror, uh, the, the the, the real images happen to be inverted. And the only one that is not is, is when you have an object between the focal point and the mirror itself. So what happened here? You draw a parallel line that goes to the focal point, and then you take the extension. Uh, and the other one may be you take shoot a ray here, reflects, and then you take the extension. Meet over there. This is your image. So the image is erect as you are. You're not upside down looking in the mirror, right? You don't want to look in the mirror and see you upside down, right? So, uh, and, and it, it is expanded. So since the image is in the other side of the mirror, if you happen to put the distance image, it has to go with a negative value. So the distance image must be a number less than zero when you do your final equation. So what we want to find, we want to find the radius. How do we find the radius? Well, if I find the focal length, if I multiply by two, I can get my radius, basically. So I have to find this. How do I find this? Oh, I don't need to go that far because I have only one equation to use. There you go. Uh, but I also know the magnification is negative of the I over the O, right? And this is equal to uh, 1.52. So I know my DI is equal negative 1.5 DO. And, and then what? Oh, and, and the distance object I have. I have a distance object. DO is given. That's where the main space is, 30 centimeters from the mirror. Capish? All good. And then I plug. I'm not going to do it. So we have DI is equal negative 1.5 times 30. Right? So I have this. This is in centimeters. I plug this number in here. I have this number here. I can find my F, can multiply by 2, and I have my radius. All good? Question? Oh, image formed by refraction. In image formed by refraction, again, you need to consult your um, your book, the open stacks. So it's so uh, the the basic equation is uh, so you have let's say you have a some piece of glass. This is a piece of glass glass and has an index of refraction in it too. And, and this is water or air, has index of refraction N1. And then, and then you have an object here, right? This is your object. And then you have a distance, DO. 
so this is the radius and then you have that image being formed right here this is the image and here's your di and remember in your book this this drawing is not correct right and i hope you correct uh, in your book, this DO is written as DI, and that's not correct. It should be DO. But the basic equation is uh, any one over DO plus any two over DI is equal any two minus any one over R. And there are certain rules, uh, and that is di, the distance of the image is positive if it is in the other side of the, 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 the object, where the object is. That's one, one thing. And the other is uh, r is positive if, if the curvature is um, If the object is in front of the of the of the sur uh, the object is in front of the surface, but the center is in the other side. <coughs> so we and but this is the only equation. You might have a situation in which this radius here is infinite. Like you have air and you have water. And the surface here is flat because the radius is infinite. So this part of the equation goes away and you have any one over the O is equal negative of any two over the I. So it becomes something simpler. Okay, let's see what, what's going on here. So we have a goldfish bowl that is spherical and the radius is eight centimeters. You have a goldfish that is swimming three centimeters from the wall. So you have something like this. And you have a goldfish. This is four. So you have a fish right here. This is your object. And where does the fish appear to be to an observer outside? So you have somebody outside that is looking at this and, and seeing images somewhere. So basically, uh, you the radius is to the object. So here's your object. The radius is sort of a concave to the object. So the radius here is going to come uh, less than zero. The focal less than zero. The image, it should be a negative image too, because you don't have an image form outside. It's going to be inside. But let's see how that goes. So we have a radius of 8 centimeters, and the distance object is 3 centimeters. And the index of refraction of water, so this is the first, uh, the first media is where the object is, and this is the second media where, where the, the light ray is being refracted, so you can see it. So any one is 1.33, and any two is equal one. That's air. So then you go any one over d1 plus any two over di is equal to any two. minus any one divided by divided by uh, the radius. 
so the radius can somebody check the the convention for that radius is positive if it is if you pull it up I'm giving a blank now how do I do that is somebody there in the page no are you can you read the convention If the object is convex to the object? Uh, it's the radius is greater than zero. The radius is greater than zero if the object is in a symmetrical body. And that's a good thing. So we have a pitch here. Oh no, this is concave. This is concave to the object, right? This is, this is concave. So if it is convex, this So then the rate is going to be negative. So radius is negative. So radius negative means this is going to be negative 8 centimeters. And then 1 over distance image is equal negative 0.33 divided by negative 8 uh, sorry for getting a term here minus 1.33 divided by 3 and then you operate that. And then you find your, your distance image. Uh, this number is going to be bigger than this number. And, and it's going to carry a negative number, which implies the image is formed inside the bowl. Swimming pool is filled to a depth of two meters. And you have an object in the very bottom that you can use to give your perception if that bottom is closer or not to the surface. Um, but the, the, the object distance here is two meters. How deep does the pool appear to be above the water? And the water has an index of refraction of 133. So this is the first media. This is the second. So anyone? over distance object plus any two distance image is equal any two minus any one radius. In this case, this is your spherical surface that has a very heck of a big radius, the radius of Earth. So this is zero. Therefore, the I is equal to uh, 1 over, sorry, 1 over the i is equal any uh, negative any 1 over any 2, 1 over the o. Okay. And then you plug the numbers there. So the i, the distance object, is any 2 the O over any 1 negative and that is 1 over 1.33 times negative times 2 okay
So again, I'm, I'm uploading this on Canvas. This is being taped, and I'll put it in Canvas. You can review later. Okay. And I guess that's it. Should I stop here? Should I keep going? No, what is this? Oh, that's a cool one. Now you have a combination of lenses and, and mirrors. And, and that is the typical idea of a telescope or the typical idea, uh, not of a microscope, but certainly of a, mic uh, of a telescope. A telescope, you have a mirror, which you have a reflector, and you have a uh, eyepiece that allows you to magnify and see things. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, an optical system comprised in turn from left to right uh, an observer, that's an observer, lens, and the focal length is 30 centimeters. Uh, <clears throat> an erect object, 20 centimeters height, so the height is given. And you have a convex mirror that radius is 80 centimeters. So the focal length here is... Uh, should be negative 40 centimeters, basically, because we are talking about a convex, a convex uh, mirror. The object is between the lens and the mirror, 20 centimeters from the lens, so this is 20 centimeters right there, and 50 centimeters right there, uh, from the mirror. The observer views the image that is formed first by reflection so the image that goes first by reflection in the mirror and then by refraction. So basically what's happening, uh, the first thing that happened is this system over here. Object and the co uh, convex mirror. And then you have an image. This image, and in convex mirror, the image is always erect, but reduced, shrink. This image becomes, so this image becomes uh, an object for, for the lens, for this lens over here. And then it's going to go through the lens and, and, and then form another image. So basically, the final image is virtual, by the way. Can you all see that? Uh, the, the image formed in the convex mirror is, is a virtual image because it's not formed directly by convergence of light rays, as, I, as, as we can show. But since you have a, a virtual image being object to another image, the, the, the follow-up image is also virtual. So let's see how this problem can be tackled. So first of all, let's start with with the first step, which is the one with the convex mirror. Uh, this object is basically 50 centimeters from this mirror that has a focal length 40 centimeters, right? Since the radius is 80. And then where is the image formed? 1 over 50 plus 1 over di. This is my 1 over the O, is equal 1 over focal length. Don't forget to put the negative sign. And then 1 over the I is equal negative 1 over 40 minus 1 over 50. Uh, this is going to be negative 200 maybe. So the distance image is negative 200 divided by 9 centimeters, and this is what? Negative uh, 2.2 two centimeters.
22, 20.2 centimeters. So which means this image is, is erect, but is formed somewhere here, erect, and, uh, and this distance right here is 20.2 centimeters. Are we all there? So you, you solve the first part. Now you go to the second. This image here becomes what? Becomes an object for this concave lens. So now let's go down here. So basically, uh, can I put the, my image here? I have an image that is 20.2 plus 50 plus what? 20.2 plus 50, plus 20 from the lens, which means 20 plus 50 plus 20.2, so 70, 90.2 from the lens. You got it? All good? So I have this object with the virtual from this convergent lens, and, and, and this distance is 90.2 centimeters, basically. So where, and, and, the, and the beautiful eyes is here, right? So where this image is going to be formed, it is said uh, the lens has a focal length of 30 centimeters. So F is 30 centimeters. Then I do my 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 equation, right? 1 over f is equal 1 over do plus 1 over di, and then 1 over 30 is equal 1 over 90.2 plus 1 over di. And then I can find, I can find that 1 over di is equal 1 over 30 minus 1 over uh, 90.2. So di somewhere around 42, 45. What? 90.2 is uh, the image of this object is formed in 20.2 behind this mirror. Uh, so this image becomes 20.2 plus 50 plus 20 from the lens, which is 90.2. And I'm a pr uh, kind of a rounding here. Instead of a 90.2, I'm putting 90. And then it's 3 minus 1, 2, 45 centimeters. So the distance image is uh, is formed behind uh, the lens, so it's positive in number and obey the convention, and this distance is pretty much forty five centimeters. Okay. All right. So yeah, let's go to the lab. Um, there are. I think I put 10 problems. There is another one here. They might be the same type. Try to do it if you can do. Oh, the answers are there. You can. Um, you can. What? You don't have the answers there? You know what? I sent to Reprographic, and they are very careful. They took the answers. They thought uh, it was an exam, and I had forgotten. I said, no, oh, you can leave it there. But. Uh, the one I uploaded in Canvas has the answers, and this one has the answers too. Um, okay, so for now, let's just take a quick break so I can upload this.